Hey, I hope you're doing well today. And today I have eight NA10 hacks that are gonna really help your AI agents and your automations. Let's get into it. All right, let's start right here. So here's a little trick to make your tools pop a little bit more. So we can see right here, I have two AI agents. We have the boring agent, we have the cool agent. Now over here, we do have a similar setup. Okay, so we just have the normal Gmail here and we have an optimized Gmail here. Now looking in, the tool description here, this one here in particular is just set to automatically, while the optimized Gmail actually has a description. But the description itself also has kind of like how I want to format the responses. And the agent can actually understand this as well and format the responses or kind of do things that we want to do based on a description right here. So let's give this a test. So we'll connect our boring agent, okay? We'll open up the chat and I'll just say, I get my emails and let's look at the response right here. Okay. Now it's not necessarily going to be a bad response, but it's just going to be a very generic normal response. However, since we have actually optimized this other agent over here, and I'm just going to move this over and connect this. Now let's also send the same exact thing. Okay. I'll send that off and you'll see that we also get a different response here based on a description that I've set in the actual tool. Okay, so here we can see that we're getting emojis. We also have, you know, more information based on what I've requested. So who is it from, their email address, you know, and all this other information. So what we can do with the tool description is not just tell it to retrieve emails. We can also direct it of how we want it to format the responses back to us as well. But here's one really big benefit. We don't actually have anything in the system message here to tell it to formulate you know responses just like we received before so this means we're going to reduce the cost and the latency as well now let's go over the memory so if we actually open up the memory here we do get all of these options okay now most of the time you'll see people just use a simple memory okay i use them a lot as well now that's perfect when we just want simple context windows where you know the agent can remember what we've previously said to it you know going back and forth sending messages that can be absolutely fine. Then if we need a more reliable database of memories, we can also use a Postgres chat memory. But one memory node here, which is slept on among the whole NA10 community, I literally see no one talking about this, right? Is the ZEP node right here. And these guys are winning awards for having the best memory, like not in NA10, I mean in the memory kind of industry within AI, okay? So this ZEP node right here, essentially what it's gonna help you do is actually uh, help your agents learn over time, you know, to improve, okay, over time. So if we actually open up Zep to give you an idea here, right, this is what you call a relationship graph. And this is essentially what's being built as you are conversing with your agent as well. So you can see things that, like, it says, you know, my preferred format for inputting bill details. So it notes that, it understands that now. Um, then it's just like, um, you know, the dates for things, car mechanic bills, this one here. I mean, I won't lie. I just clicked on a random one. It's really random, but this is what it's going to be building over time. So you can imagine after 500 messages, a thousand messages, this thing is going to be massive. So based on the query that you send, it, it's going to be able to nitpick through all of the memories here and find the ones which are most relevant to the query that you're sending right now. Okay, and this is why it can be really, really powerful. Another huge one here is holding context between all of the agents that we use as well. Okay, so let's say, for example, we had and we wanted to make a story. Page one was uh, developed by agent one, page two by agent two, page three by agent three, and so on. Okay, just for an example. But each agent has to know and understand the story previously as well, right? Otherwise, they're just writing random nonsense. They have to understand, oh, the first agent wrote about this on page one, so I have to continue the story like this on page two. So what we can actually do with this is connect all our agents here just to one memory, okay? Now, we can actually hard code the memory and just call it, you know, agent underscore memory in this case. And we have a context window of 10. You know, if we had a lot, lot more agents, we might increase that to 20, for example, okay? Now, basically, what's happening here is I've just set it up to write a short story. So this one's going to write 50 words. This is going to write 50 words, 50 words, and 50 words. And they're going to have to hold the story between each other. Okay. So let's test this out. I'll say create a story about elves and hawks. I'll let that run. And I'll come back to you in a sec. All right. So that's done. But let's have a look at the actual agents here. So we can see right here, I don't have anything in here apart from create a story 
50 words, okay? The second agent doesn't know what the previous agent said in the system prompt, in the prompt from the user, there's no information at all, okay? However, if we look at the final result here, okay? This is the four outputs from each agent here. We can see that there is a name, an elf named Lior discovered a wounded orc, blah, 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 blah. And the second agent, despite it not knowing exactly what the previous agent made, like I didn't tell it this is what the previous agent made or anything, it is also continuing the story on, okay? So Lior and the orc Grack, and then the third agent is also referencing the same characters, Lior and Grack confront of the Dark Sorcerer, blah, 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 blah. And then we get to the end of the story right here, okay? So even though I haven't passed any information between the agents, how they are understanding this and how they are keeping context from the previous agents is through the simple memory right here. So this is the memory right here, right? And we can see my first query, my prompt that I sent, which is just create a story about elves and orcs. The first agent created this, okay? This is the prompt for the second agent. So I just said, create the next section of the story, which it then continued and created the next section and then so on and so forth all the way down until we get the final output, okay? So this is really great because if you want to make something really large, you know, large documents, blogs, articles, I'm talking like, you know, those 1,800, 2,000 word articles, this is going to be the way to do it. All right, let's talk about my favorite node in NA10. That is going to be the code node, okay? So in this example here, I've just created three set nodes and I've just put in some random, you know, mock data in there, okay? So we have video views, likes, and shares. And essentially what I want to get here are performance scores from each of those videos because I just assume I had 100 you know, bits of data coming in from you know, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and I needed to see you know, out of all these videos which ones are performing the best. Okay? So this is kind of a little mini mock data example. So if I just test this step, okay, and we'll just let this run through, we have a create performance score code node right here. Okay? So essentially, we can see the video views that have come just from those set nodes before, okay? And based on the performance of the video views to likes to shares, through the code here, it's an outputting a performance score. So from this video here, uh, yep, from this video here, it's a 1.03, okay? Then we have a 2.99, then we have a 1.46, okay? So this is giving me a good indication of which videos are performing well, just based on performance score, which was created through code. Now, coming to the next step, I've used, just as an example, an if node here, which is going to filter out any scores which are below 1.4, okay? I, I know this is just mock data, but assume, you know, we had uh, 500 uh, bits of data coming through, right? And we just wanted to filter out all the crap, all the nonsense. So now we're left with two um, items here rather than three. And then I wanted to have a good visual indicator of which video is performing really well just by creating performance label. So if the score is above a 2.8, we output hot, okay? And then this one here is good. And then from here, we could send it straight to Airtable, straight to Google Sheets, straight to Superbase. Now in our Superbase or whatever database that we use, we'll actually have another column which also has, you know, hot, hot, hot videos, good videos, and now we can visually see our data very, very easily and determine which ones are performing really, really well. And I mean, this is just a really simple example, but it's just giving you an idea of what we can do with the code node. Another one that I see getting slept on in the NA10 community is security, okay? So we're making all of these workflows and all of these things, we're connecting all our tools, everything, but how do we actually keep it secure? I don't see really anyone talking about it like at all for a good example because i know telegram is a very very popular one that you know a lot of people use because it's very easy to you know get up and running but you have to have security for the telegram because there's no way we can actually set any form of like authentication or anything like that in our telegram bot right here okay so if anyone gets access to your telegram bot okay and assume you know they they found it and they sent a message to it if they send a message to it and you have this activated, they can essentially access all the data that's in your workflow. So we can actually put a little workflow security if node right here as well for this specifically. So if I open this up, now if the message ID okay, is not equal to my chat ID, then it will not pass through and then my workflow won't be activated. Nothing happens, right? But if it is equal to it, then obviously it goes through and everything works. Now that actual chat ID is also linked to your Telegram account and you only get one per account 
so no one else can really access it or do anything with it and you're pretty safe but there's one more thing your web hooks as well okay so if anyone has access to this particular link right here okay so let's say we just say you know webhook okay and you put your webhook um, url and you put it on your website or something like that now you might think oh well no one's accessing my website i'm safe not necessarily okay so if they actually were able to find your url just like this one right here and they actually put it let's say they built a little web app and they put a little web hook in their web app as well okay and they put your one in there and if you didn't have any authentication with it they could actually access your whole workflow as well okay so a little walk around around this as well just as a real simple alternative is that you can go into authentication right here and you have basic auth and through here you can just literally put a username and password and then no one else can access it okay so that's a nice and easy way but also for your chat nodes as well so if you are embedding your chat like onto a website or something like that because you can do that with the normal chat node on na10 as well if you click the make chat publicly available um you can do the same thing as well so we can set another basic auth or we could use you know na10 user auth or whatever as well okay and that's just going to make your workflows a lot more safe and especially if you're building for clients and you're not setting any of this up be very very careful another one i really enjoy is feedback okay because i build a lot of agents in python and i build with all sorts of frameworks and custom agents and workflows and everything as well so i don't just build an na10 i like to build you know customized stuff in python as well so if we actually look at this right here, you'll see I have a text classifier, which is kind of acting as a, a router agent, okay, or an orchestrator agent. And over here, you'll notice that I have all of these Telegram nodes. And it's like, what's going on here, right? Well, there's a good reason for that. Now, if I actually just activate this work, well, test workflow, okay, and if I come and open up my chat right here, and if I just said, send an email, you'll see it routed up to the email agent but before i actually got that response back from the agent you'll see that i also have the router to email agent okay now this is really really useful because now we can see and know that our you know actual uh, workflows and our agents and everything is being routed correctly to the right area okay and this is really important because we're not always looking at the na10 screen right here right we might be out we might be at the gym we might be driving in the car wherever the hell we may be okay so this just allows us to get feedback ensuring that you know things are working as they should be working okay so i sent sent an email if it went to the calendar agent well that's not the right place to go is it right so this is allowing us to get that feedback so let's just give this another test and i'll just say uh give me today's date and we should go to the general agent and there we go so we get router to general agent and today is 13th of May 2025. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So how do we add these in? Well, let me just give this another little test. And I'll just say hi. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to copy and duplicate one of these over here. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to delete this little connection here. I'll add this one in between. Okay. Because I want this one to give a little response just as I send the message. Okay. So we'll, we'll put it right there. And right here, I'm going to have to add in the Telegram trigger text as well. Okay, right here. Now, after that, I'm going to open this up. And you can see right here, I just have the chat ID. Okay, which is just, you know, coming from my account, which you can see right here. And the text. And the text is just hard coded. Now, let's say in this case, I just wanted to say, I'm on it routing now. Okay, something like that. And we'll save that. And I'm going to test the workflow. And I'm just going to say, um, send an email. Now we should get, I'm on it, routing now, router to the email agent. That email has been sent. There you go. Simple as that. Now let's talk about the AI assistant. So in the bottom right corner, okay, you do have this little button here. Now it's not really that exciting. I won't lie with you. However, it can access all of the information from your workflows. So I'll give you a little example here. So let's just say I sent a query like, um, can you create a system prompt for my AI assistant agent and a tool description 
for its Gmail tool node. Let's say something like that. And I'll jump back when it's all replied. All right, so we can see right here, it's made a system prompt for the AI assistant. It's also made a tool description. Are they the best? Not necessarily, but there are some really good things that you can get from this as well, okay? So let's say you made this really big workflow or automation or whatever, and you're like, oh, have I done everything correctly? Like, do I have all the right settings? Have I put everything in? Um, we can just send a prompt like, uh, check my whole workflow to see if I've missed anything. Okay, so, you know, it might not provide you the best system prompts or anything like that, but it can actually access all of the nodes and all your settings and everything that you've set up and determine, you know, if perhaps maybe you've missed something along the way as well, which is, you know, a given if you've created like 50 nodes, you're eight hours in and you're tired and everything like that. So this can actually be really, really helpful as well. So we'll just wait for its response. That's the kind of problem with it. It is a little bit slow, but let's wait for a response. And there we go. So you can see right here, it's gone through a lot of the nodes. Okay. So general structure and routing. Um, we have, you know, the Gmail node, tool node descriptions, system prompts, connection and flow authentication. Obviously this, you know, actual workflow that I've made is, you know, random as hell because just for this video. Okay. But this is really good and really useful just in case, you know, before we send it off to a client or before we go to sleep and we just want to make sure we fix everything, this can be really, really useful as well. All right, and that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something new anyway, you know. I hope it wasn't too boring for you or anything. But if you do want to join the school community as well, download some templates, come chat with me, ask some questions. I'll be over here, of course. But if I don't see you there, see you in the next video.